You know, when I first heard that one tablespoon of cooking oil could contain more damaged molecules than we can ever imagine, I had to pause and think, what are we putting into our bodies? Well, today's guest is the man who's here to clear up the confusion and maybe even blow your mind a little. Joining us is none other than Udo Erasmus, the legend behind Udo's Choice Oils, and the guy who's been on a lifelong mission to help us all live healthier, better lives through something as simple as yet powerful as the oils we use every day. We'll dive deep into why the oils you choose could be the key to living a vibrant midlife and beyond. So buckle up, because by the end of this episode, you might just be rethinking everything you thought you knew about nutrition. Udo Aramas, welcome to Create the Best Me. It is an honor to have you on. All right. Thank you for having me. It's going to be fun. It is. Udo, before we go into our discussion today, could you briefly tell the listeners and viewers a little bit about who you are and what you do? Oh, my God. I'm still trying to find out who I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm only 82. I've been at it for a while. <laughs> now, I was born during the Second World War in Europe in the middle of all the craziness that was going on. And we were refugees when I was two years old. And the communists were chasing us, us in tanks and trucks. We were like fleeing out of Poland. My, father, my parents had come from Latvia. My mother decided that the roads were not safe. So she went through the plowed, snow-covered fields. She had six kids with her. She couldn't handle six kids doing that. So she had to leave four of them behind. So I was one of the ones left behind. I ended up in an orphanage for a while. And then eventually her sister found out what happened and she came and found us and reunited us with the family. I don't remember a lot other than I never felt safe and I was always like very shy and I didn't know what I could trust. And I became a born scientist because when you don't know what you can trust, you got to figure out how things work because that gets you a certain amount of predictability, right? And that's what science is about, predict and control. Because if you know how what to expect, then you can accommodate that. So I got into science when I was six years old. I'm going to find out how. Right? Six-year-old doesn't know how complicated everything is. But that's been my driver all my life. It's always been about the way we live is stupid. We could live way better than that. And what can I do to make that happen? And there's something about, you know, it feels good in your chest when you help people. And it kind of feels bad when you hurt people. So I basically live for feeling good in the heart because I'm doing something with love. It's so amazing that as a child, being six years old, that instead of becoming a victim of your circumstance, you decided to embrace that and use that to change the world or the world around you. Yeah, it's a good point. So everybody has trauma, but what creates the victim mentality is a lot of external input because we heal naturally. So you fall down and if they say, oh, poor baby, poor baby, poor baby, right? That's probably not as good as just a hug with no words or waiting till you get up on your own. And sometimes you see kids, they fall down, they look around to see if anybody's watching. And if somebody's watching, they go, ah! right? So kids are very good at living into their environment. So my parents, they went through all that. They went through the First World War. Then they went through the Bolshevik Revolution right after that. This is in Latvia, right? Then they went through the Depression. And that followed by the Second World War. So they lived through all of that stuff. And my parents had gone through all of that stuff. I don't remember them complaining. And they didn't have any money. I don't remember ever feeling poor. We didn't have anything, like literally. We lost everything and then we immigrated from Europe to Canada. We didn't have anything because poverty is, it's almost like you have to say poverty is a mindset, right? And talking about life, the reason why I invited you onto the show is because 
you are an expert in oils and essential nutrition. Mm -hmm. And my audience is women in midlife. Yep. And so since you're an expert, I would like for you to explain why it is essential for women in midlife to consume healthy oils and essential nutrition, especially in this particular phase of life. Right. Well, in any phase of life, your body is made from food, water, and air, and sunlight operates it. So you have somebody says to you, you are my sunshine. They're right about you are sunshine. They're not right about you being their sunshine because their sunshine is inside of them. But we are children of light. You know, that's what like tribal people used to talk about. But your life is a fraction of solar energy that you get from eating foods that have molecules in them. And molecules are atoms strung together by bonds. And that solar energy is stored in those bonds. You eat the food in your cells, those bonds are broken, that solar energy is released. Now we call it life. Because plants are the foundation for all creatures. They came here way before we did. And they make oxygen. We need to breathe that. They make it. And they turn carbon dioxide, which they need more of to grow well. They turn that into oxygen for us to breathe. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so they make oxygen. They hold water in the soil. That's also important. We can't eat dirt and get the minerals from the dirt, but they can. They grow in the dirt. They dissolve the minerals, absorb them, put them into their structure. We eat the plant. We get the minerals. So they get us our minerals. They make from scratch our vitamins. Those are our essential nutrients that we can't make. They make our essential amino acids that protein is made from. So they make those for us. We can't make those. So we depend on outside source. Plants are the original outside source. And the fats, the essential fatty acids, there are two of them, omega-3 and omega-6. We can't make those. Plants make them from scratch out of carbon dioxide and water. So we depend on plants for virtually everything. Now, if you eat meat, the cow is made out of grass. So cow, we sometimes we say, oh, sure, cow is just a more concentrated form of vegetable. Or milk is just a concentrated form of vegetable. The milk is made out of grass. The cheese you eat is made out of grass. The steak you eat is made out of grass. Because all of the nutrients that you need, the cow doesn't make those. The cow gets them from the grass, most of them and from bacteria in their digestive tracts. So I'm making it a little bit simple. So there's your standard. So now you go in your kitchen and you look at your, what's in your cupboards and your fridge and you say, okay, each one, you take each item and you say, okay, how close is that to fresh, whole, raw, organic, and local, and maybe plant-based. And you look at how far away from that have you gone when you're talking white sugar and white flour and fried foods, especially fried foods. I'll get to that in a second. And you start to look at that and say, well, you know what? If you're middle-aged or you're young or you're old, how far away from nature do you live and what's that costing you? Because health was created by life in nature and it's an adaptation of living in line with nature and your nature. And when you get out of line, it costs you. It's just like you can't argue that. So you don't depend on the doctors for that. You don't depend on the pharma for that. Not the government put that in place. Not the educational system put it in place. Nature on the planet, in the solar system, put all that in place for you. So tell me, Udo, what was your wake-up call? What was it that made you decide that change had to happen? And it had to happen right now. By the time I was 38, before I started paying attention, I had arthritis in my knees wasn't really serious, but I was beginning. And so when I bent my knees and put a little pressure on them, hurt. I'm 82. I have no pain in any of my joints. Zero. What's the difference? I'm paying attention now. And how did that happen? I got poisoned by pesticides after my marriage broke up and I was really upset and I wanted to kill something. So I took a job as a pesticide sprayer and I was really careless three years into doing that job. Went to the doctor, said, what do you have for pesticide poisoning? She said, nothing. I said, oh my God, I have cancer to look forward to because pesticides, 60% of the pesticides are carcinogenic. I sprayed all kinds of them and said, okay, so I'm on my own here. 
Lucky for me, I had really good background in biochemistry, genetics, and biological sciences. And so I used that information to go and look for answers. I got stuck on oils because I read a study that said omega-6 is an essential nutrient. You can't make it. You have to have it. You got to get it from outside. If you don't get enough, your health goes down. If you don't get enough long enough, you die. That's how important this, these essential nutrients are. If while you're going down, but before you die, you bring enough of that nutrient back into your diet, all of your problems that come from not getting enough are reversed because life knows what to do to make a body that works, provided you take responsibility like here to make sure that all of the essential nutrients, of which there are 42, 18 minerals, 13 vitamins, nine essential amino acids, two essential fatty acids. You make sure optimum amounts land into your body and then life will use them to make you an optimally healthy functioning body. So if I understand you correctly, Udo, are you saying that our bodies desperately need omega-6 in order to survive? Is that correct? So omega-6 is essential. You got to have it. You can't live without it. And the very next study said, Omega-6 gives you cancer and kills you. And I'm going, huh? You know, I have to eat it so it can kill me? It's like, no. It was like, literally, my head exploded. <laughs> it's like, no, that doesn't make any sense. And it was that contradiction. And because I was sick and I needed real answers, not whitewash or greenwash or whatever call it, the wash is these days, right? I was looking at, okay, there's something else must be going on that I'm not understanding. And I got into looking at how oils are made. And it turns out that omega-3 and omega-6 are the most sensitive of all of our essential nutrients. You know, minerals, you can flip them on a shelf for 10 years. Nothing changes. You eat them, they're just as good as they were the day you flipped them on the shelf. Omega-3 and 6, very sensitive, damaged by light, by oxygen, by heat. Omega-3, five times more easily damaged than omega-6. 99% of the population does not get enough omega-3s for optimum health. And the omega-3s they get are damaged by the processing very extensively. And I'm looking at all of this and so, okay, they're essential. Okay, 99% uh, don't get enough omega-3. Omega-6, most of our cooking oils, colorless, odorless, tasteless oils and plastic bottles, they have pesticides in them. They have plastic in them. They don't belong in the body. And the omega-6s are damaged by the processing by industry before we throw them in the frying pan. And you get about 1% damage, half to 1%, depending on how which kind of molecules are in there. And if it's 1% damage, then I have a question for you. How many damaged molecules do you think would you find in one tablespoon of an oil, of a cooking oil that is 1% damaged? I have no idea. <laughs> but I want to want you to guess a number. And I'm doing this for your audience. You'll see why that's important. Tablespoon of oil, 1% damaged. How many? Half? No, it's not it's not half, it's one percent. I need a number. I don't know. I would say I mean if it's one percent, yeah, then one percent that's damaged, I would say ninety nine percent of it is damaged. No, no, 99% is good. It's only 1% damaged. So it's a tablespoon of oil that is 1% damaged. The question is like why it's hard to answer is because you don't know how big molecules are. So you don't know how many molecules are in a tablespoon of oil. And nobody, like all of the people who are listening to what you're doing, nobody knows. Some people know there's a way to do it. So that's why I'm asking you for a number because you'll see how useful that'll be for your listeners. So give me a number. Give you a number? Okay, 10. 10, okay. So the actual number is a six followed by 19 zeros. And that number is 60 quintillion. So it's like a thousand, a million, a billion, a trillion, quadrillion, quintillion. And that 60 quintillion molecules is more than a million damaged molecules for every one of your body's 60 trillion cells. So are you basically saying that Every time I use olive oil when I cook for my family, that I'm wasting my time because I'm giving them molecules that are already defected? 
I've, what I'm saying is that your estimate of the damage you're doing to yourself with oils is a quintillion times higher than you thought it was. And this is true for the listeners too. You know, sometimes they say a thousand, sometimes they say a million. Everybody, every time I've asked this question, I never get an answer that isn't at least a billion times too low. So we're doing something to ourselves that is at least a billion times worse for us than we think it is. That's the point of asking that question. And we're not talking about extra virgin olive oil if it is really extra virgin olive oil because the industry cheats on those oils because they're very popular and the trees grow slowly. So they sometimes dilute them with other oils. I'm talking about all of the colorless, odorless, tasteless oils that you find in plastic bottles that line the shelves in every store that sells food products. Extra virgin olive oils made by a different process. So you get some rancidity in that oil, but you don't get those damaged molecules. But if you put it in the frying pan, so you take this oil, you've already got 60 quintillion damaged molecule in a tablespoon. Well, if you put that in the frying pan and you fry that oil, then you have to multiply the number of damaged molecules by three to six times. Because in the frying pan, you're wrecking the oil with light, oxygen, and heat all at the same time. And those are the three most destructive influences on the most sensitive of our food molecules. See, our oils should get the most care because they're the most sensitive. We give them the least care. We don't take anything else. We don't throw protein in the frying pan and just watch it burn. We don't throw carbs in the frying pan and watch them turn black and turn into smoke. But we do it with oils. So the thing that we should be giving the most care to, we give the least care to. And that means more health problems come from damaged oils, more physical health problems, and more health benefits will come from giving your body the oil change it needs from dirty, damaged, toxic oils to oils made with health in mind. When I found that out, I had an epiphany. Oh my God, if we could make oils with health in mind, oh my God, we could help almost everybody. And you know, there's this thing like when you do things that help people, feels good in your chest. And when you do things that hurt people, doesn't feel good in your chest painful in your chest? I said, oh my God, we could help so many people. And I got so excited. I said, I'm going to make oils with health in mind. So I had to develop a very, very tight system. So no light, no oxygen, and no heat gets to damage the oil. From the time it's in the seed, nature's packaging is very good. They've taken flax seeds that were 5,000 years old out of caves in Switzerland, planted them, and they grew. That's how good nature's packaging can be, right? So from the time they're in nature's packaging, through the pressing, the filtering, the settling, the filling, till they're in a brown glass bottle, because you don't want plastic leaching into your oil, and oil swell plastics, and then plastic leach into oil, in a brown glass bottle, in a box to cut out all the light, in the fridge, in the factory, no light, no oxygen, no high temperature, gets to the oil, making oils with health. Nobody does that except us. And so if you do it that way, then how would someone consume it? I get that. It's obviously the practical question, right? So we decided because omega-3s are too low. They're the most widespread nutrient deficiency of our time. 99% of the population doesn't get enough. The next worst is magnesium, 80%, vitamin D, 80%, B6, 80%. Here we got 99%. And so if we could make them with health in mind, bring them back, Oh my God, we could help so many people. Flax seed oil, very high in omega-3, quite low in omega-6. So we made flax oil, 1986, because it's a way to bring undamaged omega-6s back. Made them with health in mind. And I then became omega-6 deficient on flax oil because it has a lot of omega-3, but not enough omega-6. So then I said, what the ratio between the two is important. Because if you have too much of one, it crowds at the other. And if you do get too much of the other, it'll crowd at the one. And they use the same mechanisms for turning into a whole bunch of other good molecules in the body. So they're in competition. So you got to get the ratio right so both can be converted into these things. So I developed a blend called Udo's Oil. And I went on a road for 15 years. I was on the road for six to nine months. Went to 40 countries talking about oils and making oils with health in mind. Okay, so now we have undamaged omega-3 and 
Some people said, oh, no, no, you shouldn't put omega-3s and omega-6s in a blend because they already got too much. And I'm saying, no, the omega-6s you're getting are damaged, 60 quintillion damaged molecules in a tablespoon. You need to get off those oils and you need to get on omega-6s, which are essential, which are also made with health in mind. So we put both in there. We're bringing in the missing omega-3s. We're switching out the omega-6s from damaged to undamaged made from organically grown seeds, no pesticides, and made a blend. And that's basically our one-shot answer for your oil requirements. And you take a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day. That's a ballpark optimum, a little more, a little less for different people because our metabolic rate's different. And the way you use it, you never, ever, 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 ever use it for frying, but you could put it in hot foods like soups, or pasta sauce, or steamed vegetables, after they come off the heat source. And you can put it in shakes and smoothies and cold foods and warm foods, and they're literally compatible with all foods. And they increase your energy, and they make your skin really nice because together they form a barrier in the skin against the loss of moisture. So Udo, could you please explain why omega-3 and 6 is so important for women in general. They are super important for brain development when a woman is pregnant. Uh, when a woman is not pregnant in midlife, it's super important for her brain because most women don't get enough omega-3s and the kid will take omega-3s out of her brain. That's why women get baby brain. It's also why women get two to 15 times more often than men, depression, chronic fatigue, allergies, I think, and then autoimmune, and a few other diseases. They get them two to 50 times more frequently than men. And the researchers think it's the depletion of essential fatty acids during pregnancy that sets up women for those in a way that men are not set up. Because we don't get pregnant, so we don't lose the brain fats. When a woman is pregnant and she doesn't have enough omega-3 and 6 in her diet, the child will take them out of her brain. Because nature says, kids the future, moms the past, if we have to sacrifice the past to protect the future, we will do that. And so what they say is women need to make sure they get a reliable source of both essential fatty acids, undamaged and free of pesticides and no plastics in it. They didn't say that part. That's my part. Both for their own health and the health of their children. Udo, what are the other benefits to consuming omega-3s? Why is it so important for women who are pregnant or women in midlife, other than for brain health. One of the things that's really interesting about omega-3s that are too low in just about everybody's diet, they increase metabolic rate, they increase oxygen oxidation rate, they increase energy levels. They help you burn fat in the body. They turn on fat burning and turn off fat production. And when you start taking more of those, you want to decrease your carb intake because carbohydrates turn on fat production and turn off fat burning. That's why people, when they're carb addicted, that's why they put on weight. The carbs you don't burn will turn into fat in your body. That was really good in the days of feasts and famines, but because in some places we don't have famines, we end up in feasts and then we end up putting on weight. And that's why 60% of the population is overweight. And because of the way we eat, the prediction is by 2080, it'll be 85%. I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's huge. And it's because we're not eating fresh, whole, raw, organic, and we're not eating mostly plant-based, and we're eating a ton of processed foods. Starch will keep forever, so shelf life is not an issue. Good oils are sensitive. They need care. Nobody who wants to make a lot of money in big markets wants to work with those oils. Hardly anybody. So we said, we'll give them the care they need so that we get the results we want. And so that's basically my claim to fame is developing the method for making oils with health in mind so they don't get damaged, so they actually can unfold the health benefits. And what about omega-9? Omega-9 is not essential, but people call them omega-3, 6, 9, but only 3 and 6 are essential. Omega-9, your body can make out of sugar and start. Your olive oil, that you were talking about. If it's real olive oil, 80% of it is omega-9, not essential. The olive oil, only 10% is omega-6, and less than 1% is omega-3. 
So olive oil actually a lousy source of essential fatty acids. And it's pretty stable because omega-3 is five times more sensitive than omega-6 to damage. And omega-6 is two and a half times more sensitive to damage than omega-9 is. And then the other 10% in olive oil is saturated fats, which are another two and a half times more stable than the omega-9. But omega-9 is not essential and saturated fats are not essential because your body can make both of those out of sugar and starch. And essential means you can't make it, you've got to have it, and you've got to bring it in from outside. Mm -hmm. Does avocado oil have any of those properties in it? Avocado oil has a little bit of omega-3, maybe like one and a half to 5%, if you're lucky. Mostly omega-9, I think about 70%, and it has maybe 20% omega-6. The oil, there is no standards for the oil. Standards have been suggested, but they haven't got it. So they can make them out of rotten avocados. And my recommendation to people is eat the avocados, forget the oil. But I don't use any of those colorless odors, tasteless oils ever, ever. And I don't fry anything ever. And I eat mostly fresh, whole, raw, plant-based, organic, plant-based. So you don't eat like stir fries? Nope. I can't eat fried food. I eat fried food and I get really sick. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because it's poison. Because have you ever seen a squirrel with a frying pan? Nope. You can see a squirrel in a frying pan, but not a squirrel with a frying pan. Have you ever seen any neat creature in nature that eats food in any way but raw other than the animals that we feed? No. That should tell you something. And I say to people, you got a frying pan at home? Everybody has one. Doesn't matter if you're in Europe or you're in North America or you're in Asia or you're in Australia. Doesn't matter where you go, everybody's frying food. That came from the oil industry that switched us out, told our parents to use oils for cooking rather than water. Because in the old days, people cooked in water and they changed the term. Cooking now usually means with oil. When I was a kid, cooking meant in water and we called the other thing frying or deep frying. So most people use fry all kinds of stuff. And people, when I say to them, frying is a bad habit, Oh my God, really? I have to give up frying? Oh my God. Yeah, if you want to be healthy, you got to do it nature's way. And the people who bamboozled you into frying were not interested in your health. And you got to understand that. And it's almost like you got to get ticked off and say, well, if they care that little about me, I'm not giving them my money. So vote with your wallet to get nutrients, foods that are made nature's way with health in mind, not messed up and not value added, which is usually value subtracted and not processed. Because that's where almost every physical illness that comes from physical sources, because you can also get sick from mental sources, but anything that comes from physical sources, frying or processing is the main factor involved in all of those conditions. And you know what? If you just had an apple, and you had a banana or an orange and you have a cabbage in there, you have some radishes, and have a little bit of kale or broccoli. I love broccoli. And you can munch on that raw and you get incredible flavors because every plant has different flavor nuances. You know, people say, oh, I love the taste of meat. No, you don't. Meat tastes really bland. How do you make it taste good? You put on plants, rosemary, onions, pepper. It's all plant stuff that gives meat their, its taste. So eat the, eat the plants. Eat the plants and limit your intake of the oil. And you know, the other thing is with meat, now we get our meat from feedlots. The animal only gets corn and it sits standing in its urine and its feces. And that's very different from a deer that runs around in the woods, eats grass and eats some leaves and eats some herbs. You know, because whatever is in those goes into the meat. So we get a meat that is better when it's literally wild than when it's in a, from a feedlot. So that's changed. too. And so fundamentally, the people who don't care about your health, put them out of business. How do you do that? Vote with your wallet, make the choices. And if you can get yourself inspired because of how magnificent it is to be a human being, made out of dust, water, and air, and to get the human experience, laugh and cry and dance and make love and all the things that we get to do because we get a human body. Mm -hmm. 
But what about protein? Because I know that a lot of people that adopt the vegan lifestyle, they call it vegan, only eating vegetables. Plant-based. Yeah, or plant-based. They sometimes become deficient in protein. How do you acclimate for that? Okay, so your steak, steak that you eat is made out of grass. Apparently, there's enough protein in grass to give a cow a big ass that you can eat. So you think of it that way. And then if you want to look at human foods, we're not grass eaters, obviously, but in seeds and nuts, there's a ton of protein. And then you get it in beans and lentils and chickpeas with quite a bit of starch. So I'm not as big on those. But all of your oil seeds and nuts, they're like 20% protein, 10 to 20% protein. You will never be protein deficient if you eat whole foods unless you're a bodybuilder on steroids. And when you're a bodybuilder on steroids, they maybe need more concentrated protein. Now, I think most of your audience is not bodybuilders on steroids, and I'm not either. And I'm 82. I still do gardening jobs. I still carry heavy loads around. I have no problem with any of that. I don't eat any, any animal product. And you have a nice head of hair, too. I have a pretty good head of hair, yeah. And for a guy who's 82, I got pretty good energy. My brain is functioning. I'm still functioning on firing, at least on two cylinders. And and yeah, I, and I have lots of energy and I don't have a problem doing exercise. I dance and I do mini trampoline and I have a chinning bar in my one of my door jams. You know, and I go for walks and I go for runs. Sometimes I go out and just run up the little hill to, to the parking lot and just run like hell just because I can't. Right. But a, a lot of it, you know, just to go back to where we started, I think a lot of it, it's important to spend time alone, present, aware, alert, in stillness, feeling what it feels like to be alive. So be present in your life and leave the outside outside as much as you can because we load ourselves up with that stuff. And that's a really stupid thing to do. Why do I need to know everything that's wrong in the world? And why does the media only feed me what's wrong? How come the media never talks to us about how beautiful life is? Why would you listen to that? I, I actually turned off my television. I have not watched television now for four years. And I can go outside and watch the grass grow, watch the flowers stop and actually really do smell the roses. And you could just look around and say, oh my God, what a planet am I living on? How incredible. You know, you watch the leaves flutter in the breeze. That's that's enough for ecstasy. Exactly. So there's so much here to enjoy and to be close to and to love. Udo, I know that you have graciously given our listeners and viewers a draft of your upcoming book, Your Body Needs an Oil Change. Yeah. Can they expect to hear a little bit more of like what we just spoke about today? Yes, both both about the oils and I also the links to some of the research is in there. But I also talk a little bit about the big picture because my thing right now is you can't just do oils in isolation. You also need the vitamins and you also need the minerals and you also need the amino acids. And you also need the exercise and you also need the rest and you also need the stillness and you also need healing time and you also need to be with people who don't bring you down. And so there's a lot to health because everything affects health and you need the peace and you need to feel loved and you need to have something inspiring that you can shine into the world. Right? So I know you've given our viewers and listeners a free copy. I will make sure to include the link so that they can, or free copy of your draft, not the final copy yeah, yeah. or the final product. For people, if they fall in love with it and want more, when can they expect to purchase the actual book? That's a good question. And it still needs to be formatted. And I, I want to make a couple of changes, but it's mostly it's there. It's not formatted, but the information is there. If for anybody who's interested in living a better life, they'll get something in there that they can use. Great. And where can people learn more about you? Well, I'm on Facebook, Udo Erasmus, E-R-A-S-M-U-S, -E Udo Erasmus. And I'm on Instagram and I have a YouTube channel and I'm LinkedIn. 
And I have a website for the products. I also work with digestive enzymes and probiotics. That website is Udo's Choice, U-D-O-S Choice. And then all the other stuff that I'm doing, the big picture, that's on UdoErasmus.com. I think that pretty much covers where you find me. I'm not hard to find. Oh, by the way, if you know how to spell my name, you put in Udo Erasmus on Google, I will show up on the first page. And that's the benefit of having a really weird name. So no competition. I, if it was Jack Smith, I'd probably be on page 3,766. But Udo Erasmus, U-D-O-E-R-A-S-M-U-S, first page on Google. Exactly. And then you'll see if you sla- do Udo Erasmus slash podcast, you can listen to other podcasts I've done. And there's all kinds of stuff there. Great. Udo, thank you very much for coming on and sharing your wisdom, your insights. I know that the audience will enjoy right. this episode as much as I have. Yeah, I, well, I hope so. I hope so. My hope is always that it helps somebody, something. We, you never know what lands, but I'm sure there's something that will benefit people. So I'm yeah. happy to do that. It's what I live for. and It's what makes me feel good here. And I appreciate you doing what you're doing so I can do what I'm doing. Because you're just as important in that as I am. Otherwise, if I wasn't for this, I'd be talking to myself in the bathroom mirror. And I'm I'm done with that. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much for coming on. All right. Thank you, Carmen. Wow. Wasn't that a deep dive into something we often overlook in our kitchens? If you're like me, you're probably ready to give your pantry a good hard look after hearing Udo's insights on oils and essential nutrition. Remember, these small changes can have a huge impact on our health and vitality, especially as we move into the best half of our lives. Before we wrap up, if you found value in today's episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and share this episode with a friend who could use a little oil change in their life too. And if you're eager to dive deeper, you can get a draft copy of Udo's new book, Your Body Needs an Oil Change, and find additional information at createthebestme.com forward slash EP090. Please note, this link does include an affiliate link, which means if you purchase any products from Udo, I do earn a small commission at no additional cost to you. Don't forget to come back next week for an amazing episode created just for you. Until then, keep dreaming big, take care of yourself, and remember, you are beautiful, strong, and capable of creating the best version of yourself. Thank you for watching. Catch you next week. Bye for now. Thank you.